certainly a blessing to be able to be in the house of the Lord one more time. At this time we're going to do our morning devotion and would you please stand for our responsive reading this morning. You will find it in your program. On the inside on the back page. Our response to reading this morning comes from the 66th Psalm, the first through the fourth verse. It says, Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee, and just the name of thee, and just the name of thy name. All, it is my desire to be a reflection of seated. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his most precious and holy word. Shall we pray? Our Father God, we come this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise on our lips. Lord, we thank you for this, another opportunity to come to the house of prayer and praise. Lord, we realize that there were many who laid down last night that didn't get up this morning. And it's not because we've been so good or because we've kept thy commandments so well that you let us see another day, but it's just your grace and your mercy that woke us up this morning. And we just want to thank you for that. And Lord, even in the midst of all of this confusion and all of this chaos that's going on, we thank you for the promise that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. We realize that they may not be good and they may not feel good, but they're working for our good. And we want to thank you for that this morning. We pray for those who are bereft of their loved ones. We ask that you would comfort them with the comfort that only you can provide, dear Lord. We pray for those who are uh, in need and in want. Lord, we just ask that you would bless them with the blessings that you see they stand in need of. Now, Lord, we come to worship you today. And Lord, we realize that really there's only two times that we should worship you. That is when we feel like it, and that is when we don't. And so Lord, give us the unction to worship you and give you the praise that you truly deserve today. Bless the man that's going to preach the word today. Give us open hearts that we may receive it. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. And we give you much thanks. Amen. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning, Ebenezer. This is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Now, if you know God is worthy, why don't you put your hands together and give God some praise? And I know we can do better than that. Going through the pandemic, in and out of the pandemic, the Lord has blessed you beyond measure. We want to thank God for what he's done for what he's doing and what he's about to do. Somebody say amen. amen. We're going to start this morning. Just raise your hands and give the Lord some praise. 
the Lord is blessing me right now, Lord, right now. Sing me right now, Lord, right now. He woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. now oh come on everybody and join me the lord the lord is blessing me right now right now lord right now oh the lord is blessing me right now Right now, just take a little time and give God some praise. I lift my hands yes, yes. in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone and to you I sing this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything I lift I lift my hands in toes I 
just I just want to say that I love you more than anything I love you Jesus all over the building I love and I love you Jesus I worship and adore you just want to tell you just want to tell you Lord I love you Lord I love you more than anything oh, I love you Jesus I love you Jesus I worship and adore you I worship and adore you just want to tell you just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Good morning, everyone. This is the day, once again, that the Lord has made, and it's good to be back in the sanctuary one more time. This is a special time in our service that we have set aside to welcome and acknowledge all of our first-time guests. So could I get all of our first-time guests in the sanctuary to please stand at this time? On behalf of Pastor Scobie and our first lady, Sister Angela Scobie, and the entire Ebenezer Church family, we do welcome each and every one of you. Now, we hope that something will be said or done to make your time of worship with us a spiritual, joyful blessing. And we ask that you please, please return and worship with us and invite someone to come with you the next time. We'll let anyone come and worship with us because we do worship God here at the Ebenezer Baptist Church. You may be seated to my Ebenezer Church family. That light that you have, let it shine. Not only today, let it shine throughout the week for God. My husband tell me, I always ask people, what church do you go to? Because I work at a public place. I work at Walmart, everybody know. But I always ask people, what church you go to? And they say, what church you go to? I say, Ebenezer. They say, oh, y'all the ones doing all this. I say, yeah, y'all come on. Worship with us. We'll take, we'll accept anybody. I don't just say it to black people. I say it to white, Mexican, anybody that'll listen to me. Come worship here at the Ebenezer Baptist Church where we will take you. Make this your church home. I love each and every one of you. I want you to be blessed. Have a blessed day, family. Thank you. Amen. And amen. It's certainly good to see each of you on this, our Lord's morning. The Lord has been good to each and every one of us. Contrary to what some uh, might be going through in your own personal life, the Lord certainly is good. He woke you up this morning, and he certainly started you on your way, and he led you to a good place on today, uh, to his house, his house of prayer, his house of worship. And today, you are at the Ebenezer Baptist Church, and we certainly welcome each and every one of you. We want to worship uh, those of you who, uh, we want to welcome those of you who are watching uh, online on today. Thank you for uh, joining with us. We would ask that you would, if you would, share uh, this uh, service on your uh, live feed. Amen. And those of you who are in worship today, go to the Ebenezer Church, Baptist Church page, share it with others, that others would be able uh, to experience what you will experience on today. I certainly want to just take a moment uh, and welcome, uh, well, he said first time, he's been here several times during the week, but just maybe not uh, Sunday morning. 
but I want to welcome my Uncle Dave, Dave Plunkett, Deacon Dave Plunkett, if you'll stand where you are. Amen. Amen. He may very well look familiar to some of you. Uh, he is the twin brother uh, to my sister, Dolores Plunkett, her father-in-law, Pastor Joe Plunkett. This is his twin brother, Deacon Dave Plunkett, and we're grateful that you chose to worship with us on today. He is a 1957 graduate of the Douglas High School, Douglas Trojans, amen. We're grateful. And it's good to see so many uh, other faces, some that I have not seen in some time now, and certainly some new faces that I have seen on today. And we're grateful uh, for each and every one of you. Um, today, um, we are going to take a few moments, and Deacon Charles Ransom is going to come and he's gonna share, uh, be in prayer for Sister Debbie Barnett. She is at home. Uh, she has been dealing with a lot of pain. Uh, certainly continue to pray for Sister Karen Beeman, who's with us today. Uh, continue to pray for uh, Minister Pinky Boston, uh, the entire family, and uh, so many who are standing in need of prayer. I believe uh, Sister V, uh, Velma Morgan, uh, she is under the weather. I believe Sister Teresa Ransom shared with me yesterday. But pray for, um, pray for them and so many more. Yesterday we had um, a funeral here at the church, and then after that we had a, uh, a food giveaway. Um, it was a blessed time. We had that Friday and we had it Saturday. Um, I believe we had some uh, salmon uh, that was fillets about yay long, amen. I think I put it on Facebook and people start coming from the north, south, east, and west. Amen. Uh, but we're certainly grateful for uh, our new collaboration with the Needs Foundation here in Oklahoma City. As many of you know, phase five with the USDA Farmers to Food Box program will end at the end of this month. It does not appear that there will be a phase six. So the food boxes, as you have seen them over the last year, I don't believe you really will see that across the United States. We went all the way to the end. Um, most churches uh, kind of dropped out uh, somewhere around September, October. It's a lot of work, no ifs and buts about it. But we continued on, um, and then the Lord opened another door uh, for us to be able uh, to continue this work. Um, our own sister Lori Combs, who is here today, we know that she has the Northeast Oklahoma City Cultural and Community Center. I butcher it every time, but it's Lori's place. Y'all know where I'm talking about. Um, I, I believe a week or so ago, she got a call that her, uh, the resource that was providing food on a weekly basis, said they would no longer be able to do that. But the Lord opened another door through the Needs Foundation. Amen. Amen. She, Lori and her team, they provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Monday through Friday to any and everyone that will come uh, there and they deliver uh, these plates as well and then on Saturday and Sunday they provide a large dinner uh, for those who not not everybody is just in need sometimes it's just a fellowship uh, that they are in need of that so I'm so grateful that we were able to partner collaborate together that's what we have to do y'all not not there's no island no no man is an island unto himself I think um, there was uh, the Lone Ranger, he even had Tonto. I know a lot of y'all like to be Lone Ranger, you think, but the Lone Ranger had Tonto. You better get in fellowship uh, with somebody. Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. You will become jaded when you are over there on an island by yourself. You'll start thinking everything you do is right, and you wrong as two left shoes, stinky shoes. Uh, let me go on. I believe Children's Church is going to start next Sunday. Um, and then we're asking, I believe, will there be, will there be a, some sign-ups or something? Sister Tanya, Evelyn, out. Will there be sign-ups out in the vestibule? We need to know who's coming. Amen. So we can have the books. All right. We've ordered some, but we may need to order more. Deacon Ransom will come. And he's going to talk about what we remember. Amen. What we remember. And then after that, it will be uh, time to worship the Lord with our giving. Good 
morning. Good morning. Uh, let me uh, start uh, my, uh, my speech out with a prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we are here today thanking you for this day. Father, we thank you for bringing us this far, realizing, Father, Father that the journey is long and the, the troubles are many, but yet, Father, you're still with us. So we thank you for all the things that have went on in our lives, Father, that at times we felt like we couldn't go on. But we realize that you are a living God, and uh, our faith in you and our trust in you, Father, is what carries us through. So, Father, I ask that you would just be with me during this short, brief moment, that my words will not be misunderstood, Father, that something may be said that will help someone. So I just thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. Amen. The pastor, uh, he asked me to get up and speak on the, the mural building the, uh, and what happened back in uh, 1995, April 19th, which I guess today is what? 18th, we got one more day, and it's gonna, it's gonna be that day. And it, it was a very difficult time in Oklahoma City, but little did we know that it would probably be just the beginning of a lot of things that would be happening in our society. Maybe not on the grand scale, but if you start taking one at a time, one at a time, pretty soon you can get to those numbers and you can get to a, in a hurry. And so we do have issues in our country. And uh, I just wanted to, as someone who came up through the 60s, uh, lived through the 60s and all the way to the 20, uh, 2021, I often tell people that, man, it looks almost like we're going backwards. And so, and, I, and that's really what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk a little bit about the 60s. I'm going to get halfway, which will put us in 1995, and then we will finish it up in 2021. So if you look at it, there's almost a split there, 26 and 27 is almost even. So we, you know, so when Pastor asked me if I would just stand for a moment to speak on Oklahoma City bombing, which happened, like I said, on uh, 26, this was the 26th year on March the, 30, uh, March the 31, 1995. He wanted me to say it in my own words and uh, what I would say, what I, what I had to say, and then, and then I was try to try to symbolize the things that happened 26 later. Uh, let me give you a quick reminder of what actually happened on that day. Shortly after 9 a.m. on April 19, 1995, a rider's rental truck exploded with terrifying force in front of not in, in, in front of the nine-story Alpha P. Murray Federal Building in downtown Oklahoma City. The powerful explosion blew off the building north wall. After more than two weeks of rescue efforts, uh, the death tolls uh, stood at 168 people and 19 young children were also killed in that bombing as, as they was at, at, at a daycare. More than 650 people were injured in the building. More than 300 buildings were damaged or destroyed in the immediate area. I can remember that day because I was outside of my yard uh, in Midwest City, and I could actually feel the, the force as it came through my yard. That's a day that I will never forget. And I'm sure for those who uh, remember was around during that time, they will never forget that day also. And so that's remind me about the person who, who was involved in that evil act, uh, Timothy McVeigh, who was a confessed anti government uh, militant who was executed for his crimes and Terry Nichol, a co-conspirator who was sentenced to life in prison. Even though they was punished uh, for their crime, their ideologic is still carried on by others who uh, target races of peoples here in America and we still face some of the issues that was present in the pre and post Civil War era, civil rights era. Example, as today when we think about it, we also from 1968 to 2021, we have voter suppression. The scars of today and the scars of history remain with us long after we are gone from this earth. Pastor, Pastor Scobe asked me to speak my words, and I'm going to just take that a few minutes to continue to talk about the scars of today that we face and how we can survive, survive the bad times. Things uh, can get bleak, but we must continue to keep our faith strong. In the late 90, in the late in the 60s, when the civil rights movement got started, it was clear as it is today that we could not continue to keep uh, keep going through the ordeal what we face in our everyday life without the Lord to help carry us through these troubled times. We have the pandemic, police shooting, we have hunger, broken homes, and many more issues in our society today. 
For Psalms, Psalms 46, 1 3 tells us God is our refuge and our strength, a very uh, person uh, and very present help in trouble. Therefore, we must not fear, though the earth is removed, uh, and though the mountain be carried unto the midst of the sea, though the waters therefore roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. You may ask me why we as a society in such a moral and a corrupt state of being. One of the reasons of the church, which can be a place to provide a spiritual and moral leadership. And let me be clear, many churches do and truly believe that the, at the Bible. And we also here at Ebenezer uh, Baptist Church uphold that to heart. But so many in our history of the American church, we have become passives of even regressive. And today, even some of the biggest issues of the day is spoken with a fragment, fragmented voice. The truth, many will not speak the truth, not just the church, but our hopes, uh, of, but also those who pay to serve and protect us. You're asking me why I said that is because when you look at what happened uh, during that 1995, those things are those things were prevalent as to then they are prevalent now, and we must understand our history so we could you know the past so we can move forward and be a better people as well as a better nation. Through it all, we must keep believing in God. God would be a refuge for the oppressed and a refuge in a time of troubles. We can see that in Psalms 9. Uh, 9 9. The Oklahoma City bombing happened 27 years after one of the greatest civil rights leaders of all time, in the name of Martin King, was slain because he believed in God and God's will for all men. And 53 years after his death, we still believe in God and God's will for all men. Even though being an African American today is very hard and without the church, our faith, uh, uh, our faith would, uh, in society would, would look a whole, our faith in society would be dim. But God is God, I believe, our society. If we didn't have God, I believe our society would look a lot different. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, uh, run into it and is safe. Proverbs 18, verse 9. As I look closer, let us keep believing that evil can be cast out. Not man alone or by dictatorial, nor by a dictatorial God who invades our life when we open the doors and we invite God through Christ to enter. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Right. If any man hear my voice and open the doors, I will come to him and will uh, sup, sup with him and he with me. If we, have, if we have surrendered to Jesus Christ, pray for a life-changing faith and growing dependent on him, on he can bring into our heart and supernatural love and power to others. We must learn to live together or perish together as fools. Those were some remarks that was made by uh, Reverend Martin Luther King actually on March 31st, uh, 1968, which was his last speech. And, and, I, and so I, I know that it didn't really sound a whole lot about the moral building, but it really truly, the things that are going went, went on then, it, <coughs> since we didn't stop them then, we still have those problems now. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get to. And we must continue that regardless of how bad it gets, we have to continue to believe in God. We have to continue to have the faith. We have to continue to pray. We have to continue to be brothers and sisters. And, and like I used to always say when I got up in front of the church, you know, I'm not worried about anyone in here or anybody because we're all brothers and sisters and you should love me as I love you. So that the bombing didn't teach us anything, at least to teach us today that we must continue to believe in God. And it's the only way we're going to wipe it out. The only way we're going to cast out sin is by continuing to believe in God. So I'm not trying to be political with my speech today. Uh, we all know about the mural building. We all know what happened. And even today, it's almost as if that it's not a, it's a symbol, but what is it really symbolizing what really happened? And so as uh, we can, as here at Ebenezer, we know that Ebenezer is, uh, if you look in the Bible, for, uh, 1 Samuel 7, 12, it talks about the stone of help. And as I take my seat, I, need, uh, I would like for you all to read about that because really, truly, it's more than just a stone of help then, but it's almost a stone of help, and it memorializes the situation that we're, where God is trying to let us know where we've been, what he's done for us, what he's going to do for us, and he also reminds us of our lack of faith in him by the things that we do. We must continue, like I, I keep saying, we must continue to have our faith in God. Thank you.
That was a great, great uh, speech, Deacon Ransom, and you're certainly right. We do have to truly understand our yesterday to really know how to move forward today and tomorrow. For those of you who might think it doesn't matter, um, sometimes we think that there's only one culture of people who care about yesterday, but that's untrue. <laughs> um, Governor uh, Kevin Stitt, First Lady Stitt, um, contacted me and asked for my wife and I to co-host with them at the Governor's Mansion April the 27th, uh, a, a centennial um, remembrance of the 1921 race massacre that happened in Tulsa. All right. Now, obviously, you, you look, let's call it like it is. You, you know what color they are, and you know their political affiliation. But they deem it important uh, to set aside a time for corporate prayer in churches all across the state of Oklahoma at the end of May. And we're certainly grateful uh, to have been invited to the table. If you're not at the table, you won't have a voice. Right. You better find, <laughs> you talk about me as much as you please. I does not, I said it like that, care. Because I'm gonna do what the Holy Ghost called me to do. And wherever he lead my footsteps, that's where I'm going. Whether the White House or the crack house, that's where I'm going. Wherever the Lord leads me, that's where I'm going. Amen. Next Sunday, my friend is going to be in worship with us, and he is going to preach for us in the person of Pastor Josh Curry. He is the founding pastor of the Frontline Churches. Um, here in the state of Oklahoma. You got a picture, uh, Brother Cam? Um, we, Brother, Brother Cam needs some help. I'm, I'm calling him right here in the middle of service. He needs help. He's running audio. He's running video. He's running PowerPoint. He needs some help. Y'all didn't like that, did you? Well, I might as well just call it right now. So just put it in the, in the front of your brain. He needs help. But Pastor Josh Curry, the frontline pastor, he is the lead pastor and the founding pastor of, I believe it's four campuses uh, around the state of Oklahoma. But he has been a blessing and the frontline churches to the work that Ebenezer has done over this past year. And I'm grateful that uh, he will be with us and he will preach. So uh, invite others uh, to come because he is a show enough gospel preacher. Amen. At this time, we're going to worship the Lord with our giving. Grateful that Reverend Parker uh, is with us on today. He worshiped with us about a year and a half or so ago, well b before COVID. And um, he called me yesterday and said he's going to come and um, he's going to be with us. Church, at the time of the altar prayer, which Reverend Zeke Jackson will lead us, I am asking that we would be in prayer for Sister Charlotte Butler Davis and her entire family uh, in the home going just um, moments ago uh, of her sister-in-law, uh, Brother Don's uh, sister, Simone, who had been battling cancer for some time now. So uh, lift uh, this family up uh, in prayer, if you will. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning, friends. Let's keep in mind everything the pastor has said, but I'm going to say this. Pastor Zaid has been suffering since the pandemic. Y'all got quiet on me. Can I get an amen? All right. We, I'm going to say it. They get quiet when it has something to do with supporting the pastor. Yeah. Amen. The amen. scripture says, muzzle not the oxen that treadeth out the corn. Unless you be confused, uh, the Lord God certainly has used. Somebody asked one of our uh, faithful members a couple of days ago, how 
how does your pastor do all this stuff? How is he connected with all of these people? The Lord opens the door and he gives favor. But unless you walk through the door, you'll be sitting outside of the door. Amen. The Lord God, he takes care of me, my family in ways you will never imagine. Amen. And I'm grateful for it. So the blessing comes when we are a blessing. The scripture declares it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Amen. It has been suffering. Uh, so members, let's remember what we need to do. Brother Wright and Brother Harris is standing for the pastor's aid this morning. Let's give our motto. Remember the words of Lord Jesus. I said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Ushers. Can I get this section to please stand? This section, please stand. Facing that outside wall and started from the rear, please. Can I get this section to please stand? This section, please stand. Facing that outside wall and started from the rear. This middle section to please stand. Facing this outside aisle and start from the rear, please. This middle section. Can I get this middle section, please stand? Facing that outside aisle and start from the rear, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Father, asking your blessings upon this Ebenezer Baptist Church, Father. Father, we ask you to bless each and every person sitting in the pews this morning, Father. Father, we ask you to touch our sick and shed in, Father. And we ask special blessings upon Sister Charlotte Davis and her family, Father, in the passing of her sister-in-law this morning, Father. And Father, then we ask you to bless the man who's going to bring the bread of life this morning, Father. That we will look up, Father, and you will cover him, and we will see you, Father, and not him. And then once again, Father, we ask you to bless this offering as we know you have already done, Father. And all these things we ask in your holy name. Amen. Thank you. 
to prayer time if you desire maybe five six seven of you to come down uh, right here at the altar as Reverend Zeke Jackson prepares to lead us in prayer church also be in prayer for uh, brother Marcus our saxophonist the homegoing service yesterday was his mother-in-law sister Angie what's your last name? Jackson sister Angie Jackson uh, so lift he and his uh, entire family up uh, in prayer. Amen. You can stand, you can kneel, you can sit, whatever you would do. Just pray. The scripture, Jesus says, men should always pray and not faint. A few of you can come right down here. After the altar prayer, the hymn of preparation, and we'll be looking in John chapter 2.
Let church say amen. Let church say amen. We've come to that hour of prayer. And just like the song said, that Jesus would take care of me. Amen. And if you're sitting here this morning, then you know that Jesus would take care of you. Amen. See, we all need a Savior. Amen. And if you're in agreement with me, then let's touch and agree. Amen. As we bow our heads. Amen. Before I pray, amen. I want to echo the sentiments this morning of uh, Deacon Ransom. Amen. About the times that we're living in. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Bible declares, amen, that there's going to be a time of a great falling away. Amen. And we're now in that time where people fall away from the church. They fall away from God. They fall away from things. And then you add on top of that an epidemic and pandemics and mass shootings and racism and hatred. Amen. Who do we turn to? Who? We turn to Jesus. Bow the head. Most gracious and humble fathers, once more and again, the Father God, if you have allowed not me, but us, to stand before you again this morning. Father God, for I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Father God, we thank you this morning that we have a church home, that we can come in with our head maybe down, downtrodden, hurt, angry, confused, bewildered. Father God, but we serve a mighty God who can do all things and everything but fail. Father God, we pray this morning for those who are bereaved. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, Father God, for Sister Davis, Father God, for Brother Marcus, Father God, for those who have lost loved ones, Father God, let them know, Father, that weeping may endure for a night. Woo. Thank you. But it's your joy, your love, your peace will come in the morning. Father God, let them sob, Father God, but let them sob as those who have no hope, Father God. Let them not sob as those who have no hope, Father God, for our hope is in you, Father God, in Christ Jesus. Father God, we continue to pray for Sister Pinky Boston, Father God. Lift her up, Father God. Touch her from the crown of her head to the very sole of her feet, Father God. Let her not grow weary, Father God, in well-doing, but in due season, Father God. Father God, you who, will give us the strength to run on. Father God, we pray for Sister Debbie Bardet this morning, Father God, who, Father God, who is painting and suffering. We pray for all those, Father God, on their bed of affliction this morning, Father God. Touch them in a very special way in the name of Jesus. Let them know, Father God, that they're not alone. For you will never leave them or forsake them. That you're there in the middle, Father God, that you're there in the beginning, that you're there in the middle, Father God, that you're there in the end. Thank you, Father. We ask prayer for Sister Beeman, Father God, who's with us this morning, Father God, that she has come back to the house of God this morning, standing tall with her testimony in her mouth, Father God, saying, look what the Lord has done for me. Father God, we pray for all of those, Father God, who have lost someone. Those who are uh, on the bed of the affliction, Father God. If I missed anyone, Father God, any name, Father God, charge it to my head, Father God, and not to my heart. Father God, we ask, Father God, that you just rest rule and abide within us. That you just keep us, Father God. That if you have to chastise us, if you have to punish us, Father God, do whatever it is, Father God that we might serve you. Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you. Father God, lead us not into temptation, Father God, but continue us from evil, Father God. And we will forever praise thy wonderful and holy name. Father God, we ask the uh, blessing on our pastor. Keep him strong, Father God. Keep him moving in the right direction, Father God. Give him the holiness and the boldness, Father God, just to keep on another day. For he's doing your work, Father God. And you lead us, Father God, through him. We thank you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. If I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. Father God, we ask that that preach word go forth. That it not fall on deaf ears. That it seek and save that which is lost. That it reach every man, woman, boy, and child within the same 
distance, Father God. We thank you this morning for all that you've done. Father God, we thank you for all that you're doing. Father God, we thank you for what you have yet to do in the name of Jesus, Father God. For we understand that the best is yet to come. Thank you, Father. Keep us. Keep us. Father God, I end these things humbly in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now let's give God some praise this morning. number 19. If you would remain standing for the reading of God's most holy word. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said, so said, he shewed showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you as my father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen, you may be seated. I want to talk uh, for a little while uh, this afternoon from the subject, uh, don't miss the church meeting. Amen. Don't miss the church meeting. There's a lot that you miss when you don't come to church. There are things that happen inside of these walls that can never be replicated, duplicated, are explained to you at the comfort, in the comfort of your living room. There's no way somebody could text to you and tell you all that transpired in the Lord's house when you fail to come to church. There's really no way those of you who are watching online even today uh, there's no way you can fully understand what's really going on in the Lord's house. There's no way you can really feel what's going on in the Lord's house from Bedside Baptist Church. Uh, there, there are many uh, reasons that people uh, excuse uh, themselves uh, as it relates to not coming to church. Uh, they have all of these built-in excuses as the reason they don't come to the Lord's house. 
And, and I have found that many Christians uh, who call themselves Christians, they do not attend uh, on the Lord's day as faithfully as they ought to. The scripture admonishes us that we are not to neglect ourselves with the gathering of the saints, according to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. We often, uh, we have all of these elaborate uh, excuses uh, as to why we cannot come and worship the Lord faithfully. Many, they claim, I'm just too busy, pastor, to come and, and worship on Sundays. But J.C. Penney, he said that if a man is too busy to worship God on Sundays and once through the week, he has more business going on than the Lord ever intended on him having. But many will say, I just don't feel good, so I stayed home. And there, there are going to be some times that, that we just don't feel well enough to come to the Lord's house and worship him. But it certainly amazes me that on Monday morning, some way or another, you f find yourself feeling good enough to go to work so you can get a check. Uh, we, we uh, some people will say, Sister Denise, they'll say, well, uh, Pastor, I get text messages. We, we have company in town this weekend, so we won't be uh, at church. Uh, and, and the question really is, uh, you don't want to leave your, or the statement, your company at home and come to the Lord's house and worship him. And my question is, if it, are those folks that are at your house, eating up your food, running up your air conditioning bill, are they more important than the Lord God? There, there's not a reason in the world that you should not at least invite your uh, company to come to the Lord's house. I remember there was a day and time uh, that if you went to somebody's house, uh, you had to get up and go to church the next day. Whether you believed in God or not, you had to get up and go and worship the Lord. And then those, uh, uh, it's uh, so many of us, we are raising our young children. A and we know there are a whole lot of sporting uh, events that are scheduled on Sunday. Uh, we find Brother Warner uh, ping pong on Sunday tournaments, basketball and football uh, tournaments on Sundays. And, and all of these are different things, these different activities. They're, they're really almost put there, really by the enemy, they're put there to keep your children away from the Lord's house. If the Lord's house was good enough for you to be raised up in, then it's certainly good enough for your children. We got this new thing nowadays. I don't want to force nothing up on my child. I, I just want to let them choose their own path. There was a man that was told something like that some years ago, and he, he took uh, the man who had made that statement, he took him to this garden down the street. It was supposed to be a garden, and he, he walked him uh, through the, these houses, and he showed him this place where all of these weeds had taken over this garden. The same man who had just said that, I don't want to force nothing up on my children. He looked and he said, now why in the world? He said, Brother Pecola, all of these weeds here where it should be a garden. The man that had taken him down there, he said, well, the owner just decided to just let it grow however it wanted to grow. And that's what's happening uh, with our children in this culture today. Just letting them do whatever they want to do. However, they want to do it. But any and everything is done on the Lord's day to take the Lord's day and profane it and to make it something else. <clears throat> but listen, that's what the world does. Brother Jimmy, that's what the world does. And, you know, the world can do whatever the world wants to do. But the Christian, according to Romans chapter 12, verse number two, it tells us to be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove uh, to, uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I wish I had a little help right over here in this area, right over here. I wish I had a, a little help to say 
That's what the world does. And the world can do whatever it wants to do. But if we say we are Christian, then we need not be conformed to the ways of the world. The name Thomas uh, is a Greek name, and it means twin. But, 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 but Thomas's twin, uh, Sister Angela, never appears uh, in the pages or on the pages of Scripture. But the question is, Deacon Plunkett, that perhaps we are Thomas's twin living in 2000. And 21, standing in his shoes, uh, missing from the assembly. And then when we do show up, uh, we're asking to touch the wounds in which uh, life became uh, unsustainable. More inclined toward knowing the power that fascinates us than the power that liberates us. Maybe we are Thomas's twin living in 2021. Thomas was missing from the assembly. And as I look out amongst you today, uh, many of you, uh, you've gotten into this mindset that if I come once a month, I'm doing the Lord a solid. Some of you, you got in your mind, if I come twice a month, and doggone show, if I come three times a month, the pastor don't need to say nothing to me. And the Lord don't need to say nothing to me. Try, try showing up on your job 75% of the time. Some of you do. And that's why you will never make it nowhere in life. Folks, they, they look at the way we do what we do. I, I can hear you. I can hear you right now. You're saying, you're, you're saying but, you know, I, I just do what I want to do, how I want to do it. But listen to me. Now, you find yourself in the hospital. You at St. Anthony Hospital, you, you expect for me to, you know, make it up there to see you. You, you all back out there in the cow pastors at Mercy Hospital, you, you, you expect me to come. I don't, you don't care what I got going on. You want to make sure I come out yonder to see you. Some of you, you go to the dentist's office and have a little root canal. Sister Ransom, they expect me to be there holding their hand and offering a word of prayer before the dentist does what the dentist will do. Now, you expect that from me. Well, it's nothing wrong with me expecting to see you on Sunday morning. If you expect to see me, I certainly should expect to see you do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We, we live in this culture. We, um, we, we, um, we, we just want to do whatever we want to do. You know, even in marriage, we, we want to just do whatever we want to do. But sometimes we don't look to see how someone else would feel on the other side of all that. In the mother's shoes, Brother Parker, we just look and say, well, I'm just going to do how I want to do it. But, but everything we do, there's a cause and an effect, and it affects somebody else. And as I've told you many times, Hebrews 10, 24 lets us know to spur one another on unto good deeds. And then verse 25, it lets us know that let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together which is the like manner of some. The only way, not the only way, but one of the ways you're going to be able to encourage me and you're going to be able to encourage Sister Rice and Reverend Rice and, and, and Brother Bacola and Sister Cindy and Deacon Ransom and his other, it, is we see your face on Sunday morning. <laughs> it ain't nothing like seeing faces walk through that door on Sunday morning. But we as Christians, we... We ought not ever intentionally miss church because there are some things that happen in church when you are not there that, again, can never be duplicated. Now, now can I share this with you? Because there, there are uh, one, one young brother reached out to me, I believe it was Wednesday, and told me he's, he'd been out of a job since uh, before the, well, after the pandemic, and he said, Pastor, I have a, a job opportunity. It's on Sundays. I would work on Sundays. 
and, and I, I'm wrestling with it as whether or not I should accept it. You know what I told him? Because I don't think I'm so hyper religious in spirit. I told him, take the job and the Lord will work something else out down the work. There's some things you got to do on Sundays. You just got to do it. But, but out there working in your yard, washing your car, armor all in your tires. I, I told some, I think it was the new members orientation class, I, I said, you, you know, folks who go to Walmart Sunday morning during worship, I don't know how you could step foot in Walmart while you should be in the Lord's house. I just don't know. I don't know how you can do it. But... Maybe you are so carnal that it does not affect you. Or maybe you're truly not born again so it sure don't affect you. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. But I, I just know that the Christian should not find himself or herself in certain places Sunday morning when they can be in the Lord's house. There are some things that we ought to be doing out there. But there's also a way to find yourself in here. But on the first day of the week, the disciples, they were gathered together. This was uh, Resurrection Sunday. This is Sunday evening. And the apostles, they had been through uh, a whole lot at this time. And, and, and now they, they had had all of these high hopes uh, for the kingdom of God. But now we find that Jesus, he was crucified. He was killed on that Roman cross. And, and all of their hopes uh, were banished. But let me step back and say this. He said, no man taketh my life. I got power to lay it down and I got power to take it up again. But now they are meeting in this secret place for fear of the Jews that they might come in and arrest them and kill them. And these apostles, they are together and they are in this place, but no doubt uh, they are drawing strength uh, from one another. Do you remember the person they loved the most, cared about the most, uh, had been crucified on, on Friday, on Dark Friday, and now they are together because they're drawing strength strength one from another I can't get no help in here today and, and, and you draw strength from one another by being in the Lord's house there's some devilish and dark things uh, that you will find yourself doing uh, when you out there and you are away from the flock they, 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 these apostles they, they needed one another and how dare you say, I don't need nobody. No, no. <laughs> I need you and you need me. And what does the song say? Uh, we are all a part of God's body. Uh, but fellowship is important for the Christian. Fellowship was important in the early church. I remember, I, I can't quote it. I, I remember uh, Sister Dolores Plunkett uh, Pastor Teron Gaddis, he said this during a teaching time about five years ago. We were out at St. Luke Baptist Church, and he talked about how years ago, he said, we'll go to the doctor's office and we'll wait as long as we need to wait. We'll sit there and wait. But he talked about how years ago, uh, uh, many of our children, they were in uh, having less problems and got in less trouble because they were at church all day long. Can somebody help me? I can think of some things that I did as an unbeliever on some. <clears throat> well, uh... Now, remember, I'm not bringing glory to this at all. Not, not at all. Now, you know, I, I think, you know, m many of y'all, y'all go to those, what are they, the casino and all that? Y'all go there. Well, back yonder days, uh, uh, we had something a little different than a casino where we went to do things like that. And, and, and I, I remember it was one day I, I had, one night I had, uh, and again, I ain't bringing glory. I'm just telling you what I'm telling you. I had won a substantial amount of money. And the next day, it was a Sunday. 
And I decided I'm going to go to the same type of place. And I'm going to win some more money. I lost all the money I won the night before and a whole bunch more money on a Sunday morning. I should have had myself in the Lord's house. But many of you, you are losing out on so much because you're trying to go here, there, everywhere rather than being in the Lord's house. You can get more cops. You give the Lord just a little bit of your time. But fellowship, you know what fellowship is? Dr. George Wynn Pry said that fellowship is like two fellows in a ship going in the same direction. Uh, that's what fellowship is. Uh, two fellows in a ship going in the same direction. But the early church, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And then 1 John 1 uh, verse 7 says, as we walk in the light, we have fellowship one with another. But fellowship, it does a lot for the Christian. You know, sometimes I reach out to you all in different ways uh, about being in the Lord's house. And I know I sent out even a little different message last night. Um, yeah, it, it, it certainly encourages uh, me but let me tell you something. When I do that, it's for you. Because I know sometimes y'all need a little nudge. <laughs> you need a little push to come to the Lord's house. I know y'all think, you know, I just, let me just say it. You know, I, now, like, so these preachers, these preachers, the, first I'm going to say these deacons, every Sunday, these deacons, every Sunday, you would be hard-pressed to find a Sunday that one of these six deacons are missing. Dr. Marcus Cosby of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston uh, a couple of years ago, we were at Simultaneous Revival. We were at Pearl's. We were having, I don't know, dinner, lunch, or something. Dr. Reed, myself, Ben, and uh, Cosby. And, and we were talking about preachers and being in church. Dr. Cosby, in very low voice, he said, he said, uh, Scoby, he said, a lot of the brethren don't like church. Now, you call yourself a preacher, and I just said what I said. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying it to everybody, whether they're preachers here, whether preachers watching all over this state and nation. There's no way, as a preacher, you shouldn't love the Lord's house. These deacons... They ain't getting paid. They very rarely even get to say much of anything. But they're in the Lord's house every Sunday. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to press harder and harder. Because listen, the word of God will either draw you, or it'll drive you on wherever. All right, let me straighten myself back up, Brother Jimmy. But, 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 but fellowship does. And you're wondering why you're so depressed. You're going to be convicted every time you are not where you know you're supposed to be come Sunday morning. You're going to be living in a spirit of depression. Now, now listen. Now, again, I've said there are some situations you need to be somewhere else doing something else. This is, not, this is not a blanket statement, but you know when you sleep at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Are you out yonder? You don't need to do that. You need to be in the Lord's house. I said what I said. 
But Jesus now, he had already, um, he had already shed his blood for the sins of the whole world. And then he died on Calvary just like he said he would. You do remember what he said in John chapter 2, verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And here it is. He's already told them, and here it is, the third day. And Thomas, whose name is Didymus, who is a twin, who is one of the disciples, is not present in the assembly. All of the other disciples, they are in the room with the door shut. And Jesus, he came in and stood in their midst. He showed uh, them the wounds from his crucifixion. And the disciples, uh, they rejoiced when they saw Jesus. Uh, but, but Thomas uh, uh, was absent and he missed the opportunity to be with Jesus. Thomas. He was MIA on this Sunday. And, and, and I don't know, uh, you know, let's give uh, Thomas uh, the shadow of the doubt. He, he may have been discouraged, disappointed, and downcast because his expectations had not been met. Now keep in mind that he thought that Jesus was the Messiah and the last time that he saw Jesus he died on an old Roman cross but Thomas does not know now that Jesus has been raised from the dead he is uh, alive Jesus is now out of the grave he's walking around in the flesh uh, he's moving about and one of his disciples does not know what's going on does not show up at the church meeting they're in a room with the, with the door shut, and the Bible says that Jesus, he just showed up. Here's the first thing that you miss uh, when you don't come to church. You miss the presence of the Lord. I, I, I know you're saying I can have the presence of the Lord in my house, in my closet, and all of that. But you, the, you miss the presence of the Lord in the Lord's house, in the Lord's place. Uh, the presence of the Lord is here. I can feel him in the atmosphere. You miss the presence of the Lord. You know why? Because nothing can keep him out. You didn't hear what I just said. They're, they're in a room uh, with the doors locked, Reverend boys. Because they are, are fearing for their lives. Because if they crucified uh, Jesus, they're certainly coming after the apostles, the disciples. And Jesus does not need a key. Uh, Jesus does not even use a doorknob. Uh, Jesus just walks through the door. Because whenever uh, Jesus gets ready to show up, there's no barrier that can keep uh, Jesus Christ out. Uh, thank God that when you come to church, you encounter the presence of the spirit of the living God. It does not matter who is not here. It matters about who is uh, here. It don't matter about who don't show up on Sunday. We know that the Lord is going to show up. Uh, Jesus is present in the assembly and his presence makes all the difference between coming to church and just coming to a ball game or something. Uh, being in a crowd of people. His presence is the difference between really a church and a social club. But look, look with me, verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them. Jesus does not stop with the doors being locked. I think back to 1991 when I tried to lock the door, our doors of my mind and my heart from Jesus getting in. Uh, Sister Dolores, I heard your voice. I heard you say, hmm. Uh, she knows that Dolores, she's always been a strong Christian, strong believer. And uh, Sister Nietzsche, I was trying to tell my sister, telling her all that stuff, all that stuff in there is bogus. It's all false. That's what I was trying to tell her. 
I was trying to tell her that. I was trying to debate with Christians, and I'm going to tell you something. Study to show yourself approved unto yeah. God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth, because you'll have some fool like I was back yonder days that'll come and it'll get you so confused that you start wondering if what's in here is right. But let me tell you something. Uh, from kiva to kiva, from cover to cover, uh, let me tell you, from Genesis to maps, all of it is true. <clears throat> I tried to lock my mind, tried to lock my heart. <laughs> uh, talking about I ain't eating no more swabs, hot links, J.C. Potter's sausage. You know what's in there, don't you, Sister Ransom? Uh, pork. I was saying I ain't eating no more of that. I was going up there. I said, I'm going to go up here to this uh, mass jet for Juma <laughs> on Friday. You couldn't tell me nothing. And because I was so hard-headed and adamant, it would be hardly anyone that would try to come and witness and minister to me. Wouldn't come. I remember going to... Um, this person's not there anymore. I'm just calling this is where I was, Mount Carmel Baptist Church. I remember um, I, I, today uh, marks, uh, what is it, 20, 28 years since our mother, Dolores, went home to be with Jesus today, April 18th. The Lord called her home. It was a Sunday morning, wasn't it? Sunday, Sunday afternoon, maybe. Um, but I remember I had asked Sister Kimberly Jackson, we know she's at Northeast, she's soprano, and I'd asked for her and a group to sing at our mother's home going service. And they, they, they sung a song. Now, I wasn't believing in no Jesus, but I wanted them to sing at my mother's home going service. And um, they sung, Speak to My Heart, Lord. Yes, Speak to My Heart. Let me hear a little of that. Let me hear a little bit. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Best That, that was not planned, am I right? They just impromptu. But the spirit of the living God spoke to my heart there at the East 6th Street Christian Church at that home going service. I sat there as stoic as I could. I just wanted to bust out crying as that song was being sung. And the Holy Spirit, I didn't know who he was, knew nothing about nothing, but he was speaking to my heart through that song. It was in April 1993. So I decided. A week later, I'm going to church. And the, and, the, and the lady that led that song, I know what church she is a member of. You've never heard me tell this story, have you, Dolores? I went to the Mount Carmel Baptist Church. This Sister Kim Jackson was a member there. And I was there in the fellowship time, which I didn't know nothing about none of that. I didn't know nothing. I just was there, and they stood up, and people walked around. And this lady walked up to me and said, what you doing here? I said, in my mind, it'd be the last time you'll see me here. It, it was a little bit more forceful and disdain than that. Almost to say, you don't belong here. You are not our kind of people as a Christian. You're saying, what am I trying to say? As dogmatic as I was at that time with what I wanted to believe in my head, the Lord God was speaking to my heart. And Jesus just walked through Derek Johnson, because my name wasn't changed then. Door! Now, he didn't kick the door down. Now, I had to welcome him in. But I was like Zacchaeus. I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching today far better than y'all saying amen. But like Zacchaeus, Jesus, only, only place ever that Jesus invited himself into somebody else's domain was there in Luke chapter 19. And Zacchaeus was up in, Zacchaeus was up in that tree. And Jesus said, 
Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today, I must abide at your house. I once heard it say that Zacchaeus, he got saved somewhere between them branches and time he got to that ground, but he got saved. But Jesus walked into my heart, walked into my mind. I think I just told you part of my testimony. And, and, and you wonder, how did he go from this to this? Because Jesus walked in to my life. And he can do the same thing. Not just in your life, but in your little bad nephew, cousin, brother, drunk daddy's life. He can just walk in. Listen, if he, if he wants in, he know how to get in. He, 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 he knows how to send enough trouble into your life to make you open your heart up. He, he knows how to break down all of the barriers that you have up in order for him to walk in. Trouble in your marriage? You will let Jesus in. You, you got to visit your baby down at the county jail or worse yet, uh, at Dick Connor. You will let Jesus in. Burying uh, the closest one to your heart. I got some feedback, Cam. You will let Jesus in. Losing your health, your job, your financial security. You lose your home. You will let Jesus in. He knows how to break down whatever barriers are in your life that are preventing him from walking in. And let me say to some of you in here who sit in church, uh, you come, you know, the once a month when you come, um, and you never move, you never open your mouth, you never give God any praise, you never lift your hands. He, he, he knows how to walk into your Situation, I'll walk through your situation and to get you to praise, get you to praise his name. Because enough tears will make you say hallelujah. Uh, enough heartbreak will, will make you praise the Lord. When you have been sick long enough on your bed of affliction, uh, you will find a way to lift your hands and give God the glory. But not only do you miss his presence when you're not here, but you, you miss his message. Years ago, uh, there was a churchgoer who wrote a letter to a, a local newspaper editor and complained uh, that it made no sense to go to church every Sunday. Sound like some of y'all may have written a letter, I, I don't know. But the letter, it, 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 it reads as follows. Uh, they said, I I've gone to church for, for 30 years now. And in that time, I've heard something like 3,000 sermons. But for the life of me, I cannot remember not one of them. So I think that I'm wasting my time and that the pastors all around the United States are wasting their time. This, this uh, letter started a real controversy in the, in the letter to the uh, editor's column and, and much to the delight of the editor. Uh, the editor, uh, Sister Wright, let it go on for uh, weeks until somebody wrote the following clincher. They said, I've been married for 30 years now. And in that time, my wife has cooked some 32,000 meals. But for the life of me, I cannot recall the entire menu for a single one of those meals. But I do know this. They all nourished me and gave me strength that I needed to do my work. And if my wife had not given me these meals, I would be physically dead today. And likewise, uh, if I had not gone to church for nourishment, I would be spiritually dead today. Cam, Cam, give me a little bit more on these monitors, please. And, and, and some of you, you, you are spiritually dead today. But, but because Thomas was absent, he missed the message from Jesus. 
And, and if we miss worship, uh, we are missing the message from Jesus even today. Because every preacher uh, really should be uh, saying what the scripture says. Paul, he told Timothy to preach the word too much, Cam, uh, in 2 Timothy 4 and 2. And those who speak uh, in worship are to speak as the oracles of God, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Oracle, it means literally in the Greek, saying. Moses received living oracles, according to Acts 7 and 38. An oracle of God is a saying from God, and those of us who preach the God, God's word are to speak the very words that come from the Holy Writ. And the message Jesus has given to us is an important message. The words he spoke will judge us in the last days according to John chapter 12 verse number 48 and, and the scripture makes us wise to salvation according to 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 we need to hear the message of Jesus and the question is uh, do you regularly hear the message of Jesus but not only do you miss the message, but you also miss his power. Look at verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. Jesus, he just stood in the midst of them. And really, no power can keep him down. They crucified him on a cross. But the Bible lets us know that he got up from the dead. You know why? Because he has all power. Matthew 28, 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. There was a, a young boy. He was traveling um, by airplane to, uh, to visit his grandparents. And he sat beside a man on the plane who happened to be a seminary professor. The boy was reading a Sunday school take-home paper, and the professor thought that he would have some fun with the little boy. He said, uh, young man, if you can tell me something God can do, I will give you a big, shiny apple. The boy thought for a moment, and then he replied. He said, mister, if you can tell me something God can't do, I'll give you a whole barrel of apples. But our God, he has all power in heaven and earth. Jesus has all power and authority, and there's nothing that he can't do. He can fix your mind. He can fix your heart. He can fix your marriage. He can fix your finance. Uh, he can fix your living arrangements. He can get your car fixed and lead you to the right person. God can do it. Listen, listen, listen. I don't even know who gave me this, and, they, and nobody, whoever you are, they won't know. But, but see, they, they, whoever it was came to church, and, you know, it was right after we talked about the pastor's uh, aid, you know. Yeah, right about then. Pastor, I need help. See, that's what y'all don't know. Every time I open the door, somebody is needing some help. When folks come in, somebody, needs, I need some help to get a phone. That's what they said. I know y'all. I know y'all. I know y'all think I'm making it up. Am I making it up? I need help to get a phone. My funds are short. I need thirty-five dollars. And you know what? Whoever you are, brother, sister, see me right over in my office afterwards, and you'll get the help that you that you need. Listen, uh, when 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 you miss being in church, there's a lot of things that you miss. I told y'all uh, about the time that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was about two and a half years ago. I got a phone call uh, about 1130 at night. They kept calling from the same number over and over. Finally answered. You remember, Sister Angela. Finally answered. And they said, Pastor, they said, I'm in jail. It was about 1045. I'm in jail. And if I don't make bond before midnight, they transferring me to the county. Y'all remember me telling the story before. I'm going to tell it the same way so you'll know. Uh, yeah, it, they were out there in Valley Brook, going through Valley Brook. Y'all know about Valley Brook. Yeah, but they were out there, 
And uh, they said they, they, they got stopped and, and got, they had tickets, back tickets, and said they're going to transfer me to the county. And Pastor, I don't want to go to the county. And I, I need um, help getting out of jail. I know you think you know how the story is going to go. You think that I'm going to say they called and then I made arrangements for them and then got them out of jail. I, I said, I said uh, how much is it? They said it's, uh, it was like $920. Brother Ryan. And the way I told the story the last time, I forgot whose name I mentioned, but I'm going to use Nita's name today, our, our sister Janice. Now, if sister Nita or Janice called. See, I see them every Sunday. I guarantee you, arrangements would have been made to get them out of jail. I know Nita and Janice saying, Pastor, I, uh, I ain't planning on being out at Valley Brook with an expired tag and all kind of stuff. But, but uh, you know, I, I, I listened to them, <laughs> so I didn't know what to do. You know, I just said, Lord, what do, what do I do with this situation? So I said, well, I said, call me back. Call me back. So I sat there, I prayed. I'm like, Lord, what you want me to do with this? Then I got thinking. I said, them people, they joined church. I ain't seen them but maybe one time since. And, and they, I didn't tell them call back and I'm going to answer the phone. <laughs> I just said call back. You can get mad at me. I don't care. You know, you, let somebody call you 11. You know, you go get them out for $920. And you've seen them one time since they joined church. <gasps> My point is. You need to be in the Lord's house. Now, is the point of the message you need to be in the Lord's house so you can get out of jail? No. But there's certain help. There's certain benefits. Dig and ride. Dig and ransom. Let us do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. Listen, there's some benefits that come from being a church member. It just is. And faithful. I'm just trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. But, but, but you need to be in the Lord's house. When, when, listen, when Jesus, and I'm trying to hunk this off. I really am. When, when Jesus becomes real in your life, it affects how you worship him. It, it changes how you give God praise. It, it causes you to reprioritize some things when you know uh, that whatever you need, he's got all power, but often we don't realize uh, that he has power until we are powerless. Until you can't do nothing for yourself. For yourself. And then you realize that if the Lord don't help you, you're not going to be able to to make it. I wish I had a witness that could, who could testify today that with men things are impossible. With, with men, I might not get out of jail before 12 o'clock and go to the county, but with God, all things are possible. But when you miss church, you miss his presence. When you miss church, you also miss his power. But when you miss church, you miss his peace. And that's what many of you are standing in need of today. You need his peace. It's right there in verse 19. He came into the room without opening the door. That's uh, presence, all right? He stood in the midst of them after being crucified on Friday. That's power. But the first thing that he says to them, he says... Not like, not like the Muslims say now. He says, peace be unto you. Often when you, when you miss church, um, you miss the very answer that you've been looking for. I, I mean, the very answer you have been looking for for a month of Sundays. You miss it. Sometimes you all will... You'll call me or come by or text, and it'll be, well, Pastor, what do I need to do with X, Y, Z? You know, I, I'm, I'm struggling. 
I'm struggling with, with X, Y, Z, and what do I need to do with this? And sometimes I'll ask this question, but I really almost know when you hear or you not. I can almost remember what sermon Sunday you were here and heard it or not. But I'll ask sometimes, I'll say, uh, were, were you here uh, for, first Sunday, first Sunday of, of January? Nah, I, w- I wasn't here. W- me and my family. We, 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 we went, we, you know, we've been through so much, we've been on vacation. That's it. Y'all know when the last time I've been on vacation? I won't tell you. Okay. But you, you'll say, I wasn't here. And you'll have a built-in excuse, but it, just because you were asleep. And then, really, often the follow-up is, the answer to your dilemma was right there in the sermon that Sunday. But you missed it. You missed it. Um, peace. Peace is so very important. I, I know you're chasing money. Um, money will buy you some food. But the last I checked, digging right, money will not buy you an appetite. Money will buy you a posturepedic you know, bed that does all the reclining and all that dual size and all that. But, but, but it will not buy you a good night's rest. Money can buy you some medicine. Won't buy you good health. Money will buy you or pay for you a wedding, but it won't pay for or buy you a real marriage. Because God has to put his peace in your situation to make whatever you put your hands on make sense to you. When you miss church, you miss his presence, you miss his power, you miss his peace. But um, I, I think about for me, I, and I hope I'm not the only one who's really glad to be in service this morning. I've been looking forward to being in fellowship all week long. You know why? Because he didn't have to let me live. There's so many people who did not make it through the, the week. Uh, have I got a witness here today? Uh, uh, he didn't have to wake me up this morning. He didn't have to give me strength to put on my own clothes. My wife didn't have to come help me put my, you, you know, listen, listen, you know, we say that and we, we sometimes just think that's being funny. No, no, no. Listen, I, there's been a time or two of Brother Gillespie, my wife for real, has had to help me put my socks on, take my shoes off. I know y'all don't know all, 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 all of that, but sometimes, listen, listen, until I lost some weight, it was hard for me to put my socks on at times. Uh, but, 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 but God, he has done all of that. Nobody had to feed me this morning. Nobody had to wipe drool from the corner of my mouth. So I don't know about you. I was just glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. But when you miss church, you miss his presence, his power, his peace. And finally, right here in verse 21, you miss his promotions. Uh, Verse 21, Jesus said unto them, peace be unto you as the father has sent me. So I'm sending you as the father sent me. This word sent in the in the Greek is the word apostala. It, it means to dispatch someone to achieve a specific objective. Even so, I'm sending you. Even so, I'm sending you. He says, as the Father has sent me, apostala, he said, even so, I'm sending you. This Greek word, sending you, is the Greek word word pimpo it means to dispatch someone whether human or transcendent being usually for the purposes of communication the idea of moving from one place to another which is inherent in sending this greek word it takes on the meaning to instruct 
to commission, to appoint. Jesus did not come as an independent agent with his own message. He does not ad lib, rather he only says what the father tells him to say. That's why you need to be careful with uh, listening to some folks who always adding to the scripture. We are to be silent where the scripture is silent. And we're to speak where the scripture speaks. But, 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 but verse 19, uh, um, he says, uh, then Jesus answered and said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, John 5, uh, but what he seeth the father do for what things uh, soever he doeth, these also do, does the son likewise. And then he says in verse 30 of John 5, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Listen, I don't seek my own will. I seek to do what the Lord has called for me to do. I, I, I miss the mark often, but I seek to do what the Lord has called for me to do, and you should do the same thing. But all during Jesus' earthly ministry, he stays on message. He stays on target throughout his entire time on earth. Uh, Jesus said in John 7, verse 16 through 18, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine own, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Jesus' mission of redemption is not something that we can duplicate. His role as the Son of God was and is to redeem the world to himself on the cross. It's a once and for all event. But nevertheless, we are to share his message with a lost and dying world. And listen, we don't have to go over to Ethiopia or Uganda or Belgium or, or somewhere else. And nothing wrong with that. Uh, but we can share his word with our next door neighbor. We, we can share his word with those on our job in the same ways uh, that, that, that we are sent in the same way is the way Jesus was sent. We are under the orders of Jesus to bring another's message and we are charged to bring it accurately and clearly. We cannot water it down. We must communicate the word in ways that are clear to the culture in which we are. We do not uh, have have the freedom to alter the message, to make it more palatable, that it's easier to go down. It is not our message. It's his. The Father sent Jesus. Now Jesus sends us on this holy relay team. And we are to pass on uh, the responsibility to those who follow us. We are to pass it on to those who are coming behind us. As the Father has sent me, I am now sending you. Jesus is saying that what has been going on in my life is not over. That it is going to continue on through you. That's what he's saying to the apostles, the disciples, and, and all of the plans of, of living a normal life are now gone for these disciples. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead has changed their whole life. They could never go back to uh, uh, what normal meant before Jesus. And, and the same for us. When we come to Jesus, we can never return to whatever normal looked like. He's saying, I'm sending you because I'm not finished just yet. I have just begun. And there is a whole world out there that needs to be saved. But again, once we come to Jesus, we should never go back to whatever we thought normal was. Jesus, he is saying, I'm giving you the same commissioning. He's saying, go, be me. <laughs> Jesus literally says, go into the world and be me. Be me at school. 
He's saying, be me on your job. He's saying, be me in your neighborhood. Be me in your family. He's saying, but you've got to get my presence. You've got to get my power. And you have to get my peace right. Or you'll miss the promotion of going to be me. Uh, One of the most dangerous people in the church today are people who promote themselves. You know those kind of folks. God doesn't have his hand on them. You really can tell people uh, who God doesn't have his hand on. They've always got to tell you what they have. They always have to tell you uh, what goes in front of their name. But really, if you were all of that, you wouldn't have to tell me that you're Dr. So-and-so. Or that you're Bishop so-and-so. Uh, you, if you're all of that, I would know it before you got here. But if you have to promote yourself, it might mean that you're not all of that. Because the last that I checked, Sister Angela, the cream always rises to the top. Well, the cream, it will rise. And we need to understand, we don't need to exalt ourselves, but we need to let God do the exalting. Well, if you stay down on your knees, you're at some point going to fall. But if you're on your knees, you don't have far to fall. But if you get up yonder, when you fall, I didn't say if you fall, you are going to fall. And it's a little bit easier when you're down on your knees. But when you miss church, you miss his presence, you miss his power, you miss his peace, you miss his promotion. But lastly, you miss his provisions. It's right there in verse 22 and 3. And when he said this, I like this word, he breathed on them. God breathed on me. God breathed on my household. God breathed on my money. God breathe on my preaching. God, would you breathe on the choir? God, breathe on my health. When the Lord, when he breathed on them, they received the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, he doesn't come to make us roll all over the floor. He doesn't come to us to start speaking in tongues. But But he comes to make you live the life that you talk about. He comes so you will live the life that you pray about. He comes that you will live the life that you sing about. That's why every one of us that are here today, some of you watching online, you need to ask the Lord, Lord, would you breathe on me? Breathe on me, Lord. You know I'm not always right. I'm wrong many times. But Lord, would you be so merciful? Would you be so kind to breathe on me? I messed up just this morning. But Lord, would you breathe on me? Lord, I'm struggling in this area. Breathe on me, Lord. My children, they're driving me crazy. Would you breathe on them? Is there anybody here who wants the Lord to breathe on you? If you're not ashamed to testify this morning, 
ask the Lord to breathe on you. If you want your children to act right, ask the Lord to breathe on them. If you want your marriage to get together, ask the Lord would you breathe on it. Somebody say, breathe on me. Stretch your hands toward heaven and say, breathe on me. Yeah. Hey, hey. Don't miss the meeting. You know what? Sometimes I would hate when I miss church because it seemed like the power would fall when I went there. So you always got to tell yourself, don't miss the meeting. Hey. Come on, give God some praise. Come on and put those hands together right now and give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, hey. Hallelujah. At this time, as we're all standing, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. At this time, as we're all standing, we want the Lord to speak to our heart. Anybody need Jesus just to breathe on you? I know he's good. I was broke and he breathed on me. Oh, y'all don't want to get real today. I was homeless, Deacon Ransom, and he... Hey! My God. He breathed on me. Hallelujah. So we want to extend this invitation first of all to those of you that don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin April 18th is a mighty good day for you come on I need somebody to help me come on and put your hands together April 18th is a mighty good day to give your life to Christ the second plea that we have is that it doesn't make sense for us to be homeless Christians Oh, I can get no help right back there. It don't make no sense for us to be walking around with no home as a Christian. So we invite you, if the Lord is speaking to you, to unite with this wonderful church. Oh, Ebenezer should have went up right there. Hallelujah. And the third thing that we want to do, if you desire or seek prayer for anything in your life, we have a quorum of ministers and deacons that would meet you right at your point of need. We got one, I think. We got one. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, message of love to encourage me. You took my heart from despair. How you love me and care for me If you speak to my heart Speak to my heart, Lord Come on Give me your holy word If I can't hear from you Y'all know this Then I'll know what to do I won't go alone I'll never go on my own just let your spirit guide and let your come on sing with me speak oh lord give me your holy word if i can hear from you i'll know listen i won't go alone i'll never 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 go on my own just let your spirit guide let your word abide. Speak to my heart. Hey, hey, hey. speak to my heart. Hallelujah. Speak to my heart. Oh, yeah. Speak to my heart. 
You may be seated. But there's still room. There's still room. The cross never closes its doors. Somebody that's saved right now to just shout out glory. Somebody say glory. We got one more. Say glory. Hey, hey, oh, oh, sweet to my heart. Come on and put those hands together. Give God some praise. Come on, if you need him to breathe on you, give God some praise. See, that's the problem. Some of us don't want to praise God because we don't want our friends seeing us and we don't want people seeing us. But God, I need you to breathe on me. I dare you to look up and say, God, I need you to breathe on me. God, I need you to sit on me. God, hey, 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 I know he's all right. Oh, y'all don't want to have church today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, let's give the Lord some hand praise. Hallelujah. You know, it's a great thing to listen to the Spirit of God. I was washing my car yesterday, and the Lord impressed on my heart. This is the second time I've been to Ebenezer. He said, I want you to go to Ebenezer, so I'm so glad that I listened to the Lord Jesus. And what a message we heard today from our brother, Pastor Scobie. Let's give God a hand praise. I wrote down all of those points, and I'm going to certainly abide in the house of the Lord for the rest of my life. I have been missing church. When the pandemic hit, I was at Faith Memorial on March the 15th, 2020. And after that, the president and, of course, the country shut down. And I had not gone back to church in the physical sense, uh, should I say, except on Zoom and all that. And I went back Easter Sunday. And all of those months, I had never in my 54 years of living missed maybe one Sunday here and there, got perfect attendance in Sunday school. And I tell you, ain't no better place to be but in the house of God. And I'm so glad that I made it to Ebenezer today. And in the words of General MacArthur, I shall return back to Ebenezer. I love what I have seen today, the preach word, the choir, and you, the people of God. You have been very hospitable. And I thank God I feel at home. With nothing else, let us stand. I do want to share, uh, Sister Lori Combs, would you stand where you are? Those of you who know Sister Combs, she united with Ebenezer some almost five years ago. Um, she is returning. Uh, to Ebenezer. She didn't ever join anywhere else. She's, going to, she's returning to Ebenezer. And I do want to say that we know that the ministry that God has given her to feed those who are in need. Uh, here is a person who you may see coming in on a Sunday morning and having to cut out. She's going to do a specific work. And with that, my heart is at peace knowing that needs to be done. People need to be fed. You know, people kind of, they get hungry at different times, so we can't just say when they should eat or when they should not. So she is recommitting uh, to the Ebenezer Baptist Church. Amen, amen. We thank God for you. Shall we stand for the benediction? Now 
may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth and evermore. Let every heart sing with me. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.